A few days ago I got this comment, bro, how do you edit so fast? 180 videos in one year is insane. And as it happens, I had just finished building a new PC and I was about to set up Adobe Premiere Pro on that new PC. So I figured, why not record how I do it and hopefully it will help someone increase their editing speed. Enjoy the video. This video we're going to set up Premiere Pro for fast editing. If you're someone who's just heard of keyboard shortcuts and you use them occasionally, for example if you switch your panels like this with your mouse, then in this video you're going to learn a bunch of cool things to make video editing in Premiere a whole lot faster. Now one thing I want to mention before we get started is that the things you're about to watch I already cover step by step and with a lot more detail in my YouTube video course. There are a ton of things that can speed up your workflow in Premiere Pro and that's what the editing part of the course teaches you. The hardest part is getting yourself familiar and finding out what things you can even do with Premiere. It took me a long time and making a lot of mistakes to learn how to edit fast. So in the course I cover everything that I've learned from making a lot of YouTube videos. So check it out if you're just looking to start from the beginning and learn everything step by step. I'll leave a link in the description. So here I'm on my Windows PC and I'm going to set up Premiere Pro for the first time. This is the default layout and all default settings which I don't particularly like. So first things first, I like to close my media browser and then move my project panel over here. At the bottom, I only have my tools, my timeline and my audio meters. By the way, if you keep dragging these and make them not super small like this, but just a little bigger, it will show you the audio levels. Then I always have my program monitor over here in the center. This is where you can see where your video is playing. Let me actually import a video here. By the way, Pexels is a great free website if you want to quickly find some stock footage. You can go into videos and then type in what you want. And there are a bunch of interesting videos that you can download for free. Now I'm going to import it into this project and temporarily work with this clip. So first let's finish up with the panels. If you don't see something that you want to see, you can go into window and obviously toggle the things you want. So the things I want is effects, then effect controls, obviously. Next, I want Lumetri color, and I like to keep it over here on the right, but only at the right side of my program monitor, like this, so that the sequence takes up the whole bottom of the screen. I usually keep it quite small. Next, inside here, I like to have my essential graphics panel, which I also move next to Lumetri color. For some reason, it's not opening, and Premiere crashed. What a surprise. Oh, we are back. So I'm going to move it next to Lumetri Color here, and now they're both here. And that's it. This is my layout. Next, let's go into Edit. If you're on Mac, the settings will be under Premiere Pro and not under Edit. And click Preferences, or actually just click General. Here, there are quite a few things that I like to customize. First, in the appearance, I like to bring up the brightness just a little bit and increase the highlight and the focus indicator color. So everything becomes a little brighter. In the auto save section, I always change this location to be next to all of my Premiere projects. So for me, it's in this MISC PC folder. And inside of the Adobe Premiere Pro autosave, I'm going to save it. Basically pick a folder that you want. Next, inside of Media Cache, I always set automatically delete cache files after a certain amount of time. For me, it's 30 days because I rarely work on a singular project for more than 30 days. So it can get deleted. Now, the location of the cache is also inside of my C drive. So I always like to put it next to all of my projects. Again, I'm going to select my MISC folder. And here I choose Move to move the existing cache to that location as well. Next, inside of Memory, I generally reserve at least 5 gigabytes of RAM for other applications, and Premiere can have the remaining 26. In the timeline, I set my audio transition default duration from 1 second to 2 frames. That's because I like to add a cross dissolve between my sentences to make them end and begin slightly faster. That way, there's no gap in between. I choose the timeline playback auto scrolling to no scroll so that when the timeline leaves the screen it doesn't immediately jump me to that location it just continues playing the video and lets me do my thing on the timeline oh I forgot media I always set default media scaling to set to frame size that way when I import something into Premiere it's automatically going to resize something to fit the whole frame I don't have to resize it manually to fit the screen this is really useful if you're doing a lot of screen recordings or tutorials where it's annoying to resize it every single time. Before we get to keyboard shortcuts, which is the most fun part that saves me the most amount of time, I'm going to quickly import my presets. So inside of presets, I'm going to click import presets and then I'm going to choose my presets pack. This basically adds a bunch of things that I use, like a transform up preset, which nicely transforms a clip into frame like this with a little bounce. We can add things like a deep fried preset, which is like a meme that deep fries it, or we can pile it on top as well. It gets worse and worse. You can do things like a 
basic 3D effect, which makes it look like the monitor is being recorded and it's slowly being zoomed out, or a little bit of movement, so it moves the whole recording slightly, or something like the transform up with smooth bounce, so it's going to come in nicely from the bottom. That's pretty slow, so we're going to use the normal transform, and then we can transform down here at the end, so when I finish drawing, it's going to go down. So these are some of the presets that I use, I'll leave a link to them in the description. And now let's move on to keyboard shortcuts. So if you want to copy most of my keyboard shortcuts, here they are in a nice spreadsheet. Of course, most of them will not make sense without me explaining the philosophy behind them, but if you want to copy them, here they are. So let's begin with the philosophy. The way I set my keyboard shortcuts, by the way, the shortcut to open keyboard shortcuts is Control alt k or Command-Option-K on Mac. So the way I do it is I have all of my keyboard shortcuts easily accessible with my left hand. And a lot of default keyboard shortcuts are somewhere here. For example, Control K to add edit. To use this shortcut, and I use it multiple times every minute, I would have to always lift up my hand from my mouse and then move it to the keyboard to hit Control with my left hand and K with my right hand. And over time, this wastes so much time. Having to lift up your hand from your mouse and move it to the keyboard takes way longer than hitting two keys with your left hand. So let's begin remapping the keyboard shortcuts. The first one is actually Control K. Since you're going to use this a lot. By the way, this is what it does. If you hover over a clip, you can press Control K and it splits these clips under your playhead. Or you can use this tool, which is also very slow because you have to constantly switch between your move tool and your cut tool. So instead of Control K, I use the letter S for this without any control. To easily add a shortcut to a key, you can search for it here. So add edit. Here you can see it's Control K and then drag it onto the letter you want. So now when I press S, it will immediately add a cut under my playhead which is so much faster than having to do it with Control K and moving your hand from the mouse. Next, we have D, and I use D to enable and disable a clip. By default, it's Shift E. So if I go into Shift E, it should be under Application Clip Enable. So I'm going to look for Application, then find Clip. This is File, Edit, Clip, and boom, there's Enable. So instead of Shift E, I'm going to drag it onto the letter D. And now when I have a clip highlighted, I can hit the letter D and it will disable it. Basically makes it invisible. It's a lot easier than going into this eye here and toggling the whole track off instead of one clip. Also, sometimes I might have a few versions of a clip and I want to toggle between between one or the other. This makes it a lot easier than doing it with these eyeballs here. One more thing this is useful for is if you have a picture-in-picture -picture video. So let's say that this fish is making the video and we want to toggle between the full screen of this fish and a picture-in-picture -picture mode because this fish is sharing its screen. So we want to toggle between this and the full screen. What you can do in this case is have two layers of the fish, one sized down here and one sized fully, and then all of these clips linked with command or control L, and when you want to toggle into the picture-in-picture -picture mode, you can add a cut with the letter S, then select the top layer and disable it. So now the fish is talking, and then when it starts sharing its screen, it's going to immediately toggle over here. Once it finishes its drawing, we can put it back into full screen mode. So that's what the enable command allows us to do easily. Say the fish said something funny here, so we can just D on this clip and maximize it on the screen, and then go back to screen share. Beautiful. Next, there's one keyboard shortcut that's currently Currently annoying me a lot and it's the delete key or the backspace key. I always have it set to my letter F. So instead of having to go here to delete something, I can just click F with my left hand and delete something. So I look for delete. It should be under edit and it's actually called clear. So I'm going to drag it onto my letter F. Now when I add a cut, it's super easy to delete something with the letter F. Next, I have my X key set to ripple delete. By default, you can ripple delete something with alt backspace. Again, the backspace key is on the right side of the keyboard, which means you'll have to move your hand from your mouse to do it. And ripple delete is something that I use pretty much for every video multiple times over. So I set my ripple delete to the letter X. And now when I want to remove this part of the clip and move everything on the right side to its place, I can simply hover over it. For some reason, my playhead doesn't automatically select clips. So there's one more setting I completely forgot to change. To enable this, you can go into sequence. It's weirdly not inside of preferences, but it's under sequence and selection follows playhead. Now when you move your playhead,
head, it automatically selects the clip under it. So if I want to ripple delete this clip, I just have to hover over it and hit X on my keyboard. Next, we have the Q and W keys. Now, these are default keyboard shortcuts in Premiere, and the things they do can be quite confusing. Ripple trim previous edit to playhead and ripple trim next edit to playhead. What does that even mean? Say I want to remove this part of this clip and move everything else on the right into its place. By default, I would have to come here, add a cut here, then select this part, click delete, select the space, and then click delete once again. A lot of actions for a simple thing. So what I can do instead is hit W and it will cut out what's after my playhead and move everything else into its place. So if I click W, this part will be gone and everything else will move back. And Q is the opposite. If I want to remove the beginning of this clip and move everything into its place, I can hit Q and it will move in. The same thing for this clip. If I want to remove this part, I can hit W and it moved everything else into its place. Obviously, there was nothing to move. And if I want to remove the beginning here and move the rest of the clip into its place, I can hit Q. So these two I use every single time I edit a video. Now, these five I have mapped quite differently from what's here. So these days I have my one, two and three keys map to shuttle left, shuttle stop, and shuttle right. If you press the L key, it will start playing your video, but if you hit the letter L twice, it will play double speed. And if you hit it one more time, it will go even faster and even faster. The same for the letter J. If you hit it once, it will go backwards at 1x speed, but if you keep hitting it, it will go faster. And the letter K stops. So to not have to move my hand from my mouse onto the J, K, and L keys, I've remapped these to 1, 2, and 3. Shuttle left goes on to 1, shuttle right goes on to 3 and shuttle stop goes on to number 2. Beautiful. Next we have shift Z, shift X and shift C. Now it's really annoying to navigate every single panel like this with your mouse. Sometimes they get lost or you accidentally close them. So you can set a keyboard shortcut to immediately jump you to that panel even if it's closed. And the panels that I use most are projects, this is where all of my clips are, then effects controls panel where I can control effects of a particular clip like zoom in with keyframes and so on. And then the effects panel where I can apply different effects. So I set shift Z to go into my projects panel. It's over here under workspaces. By default, the shortcut is shift one, but it's quite far to reach. So I set it to shift Z, then shift X to effect controls, which by default is shift five. That's really far away. So that's shift X and finally shift C for the effects panel. By default, it's shift seven, super far away. So now let's say I want to quickly zoom into this clip instead of coming over here and looking for the effect controls panel, I can hit shift X and it immediately puts me there. Then I can start setting my keyframes and zooming into whichever part of the clip I want, which is really handy and really quick. I've remapped the caps lock key on my keyboard to be the backwards slash. And what the backwards slash does by default is it zooms out to the full sequence. So if you're zoomed in super far and you're doing something here, you can hit the backslash or the caps lock key for me and it will zoom out to where you can see all the clips inside of your sequence. This is a default shortcut, command option V or control alt V to paste attributes. Of course, you have to copy attributes first. So see this zoom effect here. If I click control C, select these clips and control alt V, I can paste in my motion attribute, which will paste the zoom in across each of these clips. So this one has a zoom in now and this one should have a zoom in. This is really useful if you want to paste effects from one clip to another. I also use a lot of nested sequences in my project. So instead of having to right click and nest every time, I've set my nest keyboard shortcut to be the letter N. Now when I click N, it will immediately nest the sequence. V is the default shortcut for the move tool. A is the default keyboard shortcut for the track select forward tool. M to add a marker. These are just shortcuts that I use a lot. Now this is really useful. When you're zooming into a clip or doing something with keyframes, sometimes you want the zoom in to happen smoothly. So what you typically do in that case is select keyframes, right click, temporal interpolation and ease in for the last keyframes and then right click temporal interpolation and ease out for the first keyframes. Now the zoom in eases in and out. It happens a lot smoother. If I increase the gap between the keyframes, you should be able to see it better. So it eases in and then eases out. The curve looks like this. The zoom in starts off slow and then as it goes on, it becomes faster and then slows down at the end. But right clicking every time and going into temporal interpolation takes a lot of time, especially if you use a lot of keyframes. So you can set a keyboard shortcut. It's called keyframe temporal interpolation ease out. I'm just going to copy this and put it here and I'm going to drag it onto my comma key. And then for ease in, I'm going to drag it onto my period key. And now whenever I want to 
do that, I just have to select the keyframes and press my period key for the right keyframes and my comma key for the left keyframes. The comma key is on the left side of the keyboard and the period key is on the right side, so it's easy to remember. Right keyframes, right key. Left keyframes, left key. Now only after editing for a little bit, I realized that I missed a few keyboard shortcuts. One of which being control T. Now, what I've set it to do is instead of text, I set it to activate direct manipulation in program monitor. So basically, when you're editing something inside of Photoshop and you have something on a layer, you can move that layer by pressing Ctrl T and it lets you freely move it around. Now, in Premiere to move something, you first have to select the clip, then go into your effect controls and play with these attributes, the position and scale, or click on motion and then you can move it around with your mouse. So to avoid having to go into effect controls, controls, you can select a clip and click Control T and it will immediately activate it here and you can resize and move it around just with your mouse. So that's what the activate direct manipulation in program monitor means. Now one more keyboard shortcut that I've set is Control Shift F to add a frame hold. Now when you have something like a screen recording, like for example here, and you want to pause on a specific part, let's say I wanted to pause over here. What you can do in that case is split the clip because this is the ending and something else is happening. I'm going to move it over there and let's say I want to include this here in this gap. So one option is to click this icon to export a screenshot. I'll choose my desktop as the path and format as JPEG and then from your desktop import the image here and then fill it in the middle. So now this just continues. But this takes quite a bit of time because you have to take the screenshot and import it back again. So what you can do in that case is come here, select the clip and click the shortcut that I just mentioned, Control Shift F or right click and add frame hold. What this will do is it will freeze everything after my playhead on this clip. So if I click Control Shift F, it added a cut here and now I can freely move this around and extend it to however long I want and the middle here will not move. It will be frozen. I use this a lot for when I do screen recordings, so it's a really useful keyboard shortcut for me. Of course, it can sometimes work with just videos. If I want it to freeze right here, I click Command Shift F and now everything after my playhead is frozen. So this will be a frozen frame. I can make it longer or shorter, no matter the actual duration of this clip. Now, like I said in the beginning of this video, I go over all of these things and with a lot more detail inside my video course. It has everything related to creating and editing videos for YouTube in one single place. So if you want a complete step-by-step -step beginner's guide on how to get strangers to watch your stuff, you can get it by clicking the link in the description. You'll not only get to know your way around Adobe Premiere Pro, but also the philosophy behind YouTube thumbnails, learn how to fix voiceovers and audio, because audio is 80% of the video. You'll not only get that, but also a bunch of material on how to play the YouTube game that will help you find your unique niche, make solid intros, learn to tell stories, and all of the other things a beginner YouTuber would need to have the best possible odds of succeeding when starting a new channel. So once again, if you want a complete knowledge pack in one single place that you get access to forever and can come back to whenever you want, go over to the link in the description to enroll. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.